Isn't that a beautiful way to, to cure sibling rivalry? You know, let them play together. Beautiful. I love it. You know, it's just a way to uh, we'll go back. This is a great morning. I don't know about you, but after yesterday's opening night for our series, it's just stirred and moved my heart. I just, um, I've I just been celebrating in the presence of the Lord this morning. Yeah, it's, it's been good. In fact, you know, a, a wiser man, after listening and worshiping in this moment, a wiser man would just call for, the, you know, the benediction and sit down. But the, I'm not a wiser man, so I'm just going to go ahead and share with you the message for this morning that we've entitled Choice. Choice, just one word, choice. So join me as we pray together. Father, uh, teach us this morning about the prophetic message you have given us through our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Make it clear, make it relevant, and more importantly, make it shareable as we ask it in the name of your Son. Amen. I want to welcome all of you and those who are following online. I'm delighted you're actually here in Main Mosaic, your place of worship this morning, to welcome you to our fourth and final installment, installment of our series that we've entitled, Why Are We Here?, uh, this message is just simply focusing on a choice. Now, we've actually, for those of you who may not have been with us over the past few weeks, we have been on a quest. We have been hunting to discover the unique mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And let me tell you briefly where we have been. The mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church includes the Great Commission of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. But we also said that in addition to that, as we were looking at the Great Commission, which is very core to our beliefs and practice, you know, making disciples is core to who we are. But we said in addition to that, we also said, we took it one step further, we said that we take the Great Commission one step further, and that's the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14, 6 through 12. And so we went through angels one and two, and we, sum, we summarized it this way. The first angel, we said, it communicated this notion of honor and worship. Honor and worship to whom, everyone? The creator, that's right. Worship, honor, and worship the creator, why? Because justice is coming and time is running out. Number two was shared by Pastor Eric. He entitled it. I'm not sure if you remember, he entitled it Alarm Fatigue, and he talked about uh, Babylon is fallen, and we summarize, it, we summarize it this way. Trying to earn my salvation or setting aside God's law won't work. Why? Because that's what confusion is. It tries to change God's law to confuse you, not to lead you to Jesus, but to come up with a counterfeit and lead you away from Jesus. Make sense? Yes or no? Oh, man, only one person. I'm going to have to have to circle back to this one. Don't worry, brother. The, the rest of the church is going to catch up to you in just a moment. All right? All right. Now, we're going to quickly jump into the third and final angel. This is the last angel. And we looked at now, number one, number two, we've kind of summarized it. And I want to take you now to the third angel, which is found in the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 14. Let's make our way there to Revelation chapter 14. All right, Revelation chapter 14. Not sure if you're tracking with me. We're going to drop down to verse number 9. And this is what John the Revelator says, beginning in verse 9. I saw a third angel... And it followed them and said with a mega voice, a megaphone voice, if anyone, what everyone? If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented. We're burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest 
or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for those who receive the mark of its name. Pause there because we're going to park in this verse through the duration of our time together. I just finished reading this verse and not a single amen. This is not good. Not a single amen in the Lord's house this morning. So no praises off the lips of the saints for this verse. And I can understand why. You know, because this verse is actually good news, uh, but it's not resonating with you. I, I get it. Which is why I need to tell you, I want to see what Jim thinks. You, you remember Jimmy? I, I want to try, try this out on Jimmy. How many of you remember who Jimmy is? Uh, only one person. All right, let me quickly tell you. I'm going to reintroduce who Jimmy is. Jimmy is my next door neighbor, right? But he is also your neighbor too. Jimmy is in his 20s, 30s, and 40s. He not only lives next to me, but he also lives next to you. He's not a religious person. In fact, he's kind of, he's, he's a little open to spiritual stuff, but he gets it primarily from what he watches on television and you know, off his device, off his social media. He, he's kind of open to it, but uh, not really engaged, so to speak. He's not really a, a hard and true Bible interest. And I've been studying about these three angels, and I've learned the good news of this third angel's message, and I'm going to share it with Jimmy this morning. Now, I want you to be the proverbial fly on the wall. You know what I'm talking about? I want you to observe the dialogue that's, that's going to take place in this interchange with me and my neighbor, which is your neighbor too, all right? All right, so you're going to be the, the fly on the wall. Are you ready for that? Are you ready? Are you going to track? All right, here we go. Here we go. Hey, Jimmy. No, hey, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, it's Frank again. Yeah, I know it didn't go well the last time I was here, but, uh, but there's three angels, and this is the last angel. Yeah, yeah, after this, this is going to be the last time I won't come back again. This is only three angels. Yeah, yeah, I'll make it brief, and, and, you know, and because Jimmy is a nice guy, he opens the door and he lets me in. Hey, listen, Jimmy, um, you know, I, I know you were pretty excited the last time I was here because this is some good stuff. And as it turns out, God has one final message before he returns again. He wants you to know all about it. And I'm so excited, Jim, I want to share it with you because I believe this is the best. This is the greatest one, and, and I love this. Are, are you ready, Jimmy? Jimmy's like, ah, you know, okay, okay, go ahead. Jimmy, God is going to have a house party. God is going to have this big party at the end of time, and you're on his guest list. In fact, you're not only on his guest list, you're on the menu. Yeah, God is going to bring this big end time message. It's going to be an end time barbecue. And, you're, and guess what? You are going to be his Slim Jim. Yeah, you, you get it, you get it, you know, Jim, Slim, Slim, uh, uh, okay, all right, you guys want to get it, all right, you're going to sizzle, you are going to fry and never die, Jim, and, and by the way, Jimmy, uh, we have a Bible study next week, uh, do you want me to come for you and pick you up so that you can attend, I, I, I can also drop you off if that's too much of a problem for you, you know, not only is Jimmy not only is he not going to come to the Bible study, but at this point, Jimmy will not have at least any interest at all in ever cracking this book again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and let's be candid. You know, some of us who are listening right now after reading that verse, with the exception of Brother Carlos, um, are probably in the same boat as well because you're not a man. You're not in the amen boat. You know, we found some great news, some good news, great news in the first angel. We found some good news in the second angel. But this kind of doesn't seem like it's good news. It's kind of like all bets are off when you get to the third angel. And let me be clear. This is indeed the strongest warning in all of Scripture. You can kind of go through all the different pages of the Scripture and find warnings here and there sprinkled throughout the Bible. But this is the granddaddy of them all. I mean, this is everything. This is, you know, this is, this is all of everything in the bucket. There is nothing that tops this one. And yet, I believe, in spite of that, it is possible to find good news 
even in the third angel. But I'm, I'm going to have to cut some corners this morning, and I'm going to have to tell you that I will not be identifying the mark of the beast or the image of the beast. I'm not going to be doing that right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to rely on some prior knowledge. And what I mean by that is for those of you who have you know, prior info, prior studies in this, I'm going to rely on you because I'm going to cut some corners. But if you're visiting, if you're listening to this message for the first time and you're wondering, how did he get there from here, then pull me over. We're going to be here after the service. Ask me whatever questions. Let's chat so that you can kind of get this, you know, fill in some of the blanks to the questions that you may have. But you know, I'm looking at your faces. I, I, you know, somebody, some, some people actually, over the past several weeks, they've been pulling me aside and they say, Pastor, come on. Why don't you just give us this message comprehensively? You know, stop cutting the corners. You know, just, you know, let it all out. We got plenty of time. We can stay here until the cows come home. No, no, we're not going to do that. Those, those, <laughs> we're just going to rely on the fact that if you have questions, come and see me. But the reason I cut corners it's not simply because many of you have prior knowledge, but all, for two reasons. Reason number one is because you're going to get that information from the series that we're presently involved in, the Promise Prophecy series. You're going to be able to get some of those blanks that, you may, that we may kind of put aside for a moment. You're going to get it. And so that's why I'm, in, I'm, I'm challenging you, inviting you to be part of this journey with us. Because even though repetition deepens impression, I truly believe that even though that happens, I also believe that repetition needs to be applied, which brings us to reason number two. Reason number two is that this series was actually intended to be practical. To take this information that you're learning, it was intended for you to share it with others. It was my hope and prayer and that of Pastor Eric's and everyone else on the worship team was that was for you to take this and give it away. You know, what happens in the sanctuary on a weekly basis when you're inspired by the Holy Spirit, that inspiration needs to transfer to transformation. You know, you need, you know when your lives are, are being changed, take that and share it. lives. What happens within these four walls on a given Sabbath cannot stay here. Did you just hear what I just said? It cannot what? It cannot stay here. It needs to go outside of these four walls. It, it, it cannot remain within the confines of these walls. It cannot remain within the confines of what's between your two ears. It needs to be given away. It needs to be what, everyone? It needs to be given away. You cannot be stingy with this information. You cannot hoard this information. This information was intended by God through these messengers for you to be a messenger too, to share it with other people. You know, you understand how the odds are actually stocked in your favor, right? It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. The odds are actually stocked in your favor because when you share what God has placed on your heart, you are actually now partnering what, what did i just say you're partnering with the person's angel who you're sharing it with so you have the person's angel who is siding with you you have the holy spirit who's also helping you and you have your own angel that's also working in the dynamics of that interpersonal dialogue you got three people including yourself that's four those are good odds do you think those are good odds Man, I hope you do, because you can now take that and share what God has given you with others. Okay, now, I truly believe it is possible to find some good news even in the third angel's message. But if you can't find it, we need to understand at least two things. How many things did I just say? N number one, point number one, God respects our power of choice. Y Believe it or not, you are made the way God has constructed you. You are built with the image of God. You have the image of God. Whether you want to acknowledge it as a matter of fact 
it's irrelevant. The fact of the matter is that for this particular point, we are made in the image of God. And that means that you are free moral agents with the ability to choose. That's why we've entitled the message to choose. It's your choice. Now, it is possible that many of us refuse not to embrace that choice. And that's your decision. But God looks at us and he says, you can choose for or against me. All I need from you is to let this sink in your mind. Because the third angel's message is all about choice. It says, if you worship the image of the beast, it is all about worship. It's about decisions. The mark of the beast is who will you worship? It's about a choice. You will need to choose. It's all about that. And the most powerful being in the entire universe, the creator of all, the Lord of all, will stop. You, you can stop them dead on the tracks. If you want God to stop and not come any further, all you have to do is utter one word. Do you know what that word is? It has two letters, guys. There you go. I heard it. No. Let's say it together, everyone. Say no. You want God to stop dead on his tracks? Just utter that one word, those two letters. And Jesus says, okay, all right, I'm not going any further. Why? Because Jesus is a perfect gentleman. He will not come in where he is not wanted. He's not interested in twisting your arm. He's not interested in becoming your dental assistant and pulling out your teeth. He's not interested in pulling your hair. Jesus wants you to acknowledge and share freely. This is not just simply an opinion because love, in order for love to be love, it must be chosen freely. Jesus knows this, and he has established this rule, this profound principle, and he will never cross that principle. He's a perfect gentleman. And he will not come in where he is not wanted. He will, and I guarantee you, respect your power of choice. Number two, secondly, God does everything. He does everything to ensure your salvation. All right. All right. Praise God. See, Carlos, they're catching up. The, 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 the amens are mounting, brother. Yes. Amen. If you find this good news in the third angel's message, we need to go to little Johnny. Do, do you guys know who little Johnny is? Okay, only a few people. Let me see a show. You know who little Johnny is. All right, all right. For those of you who have kids, raise your hands. All right, good. Okay, so you're going to track with me in just a moment because you're going to know who little Johnny is in just a moment, okay? And for those of you who don't have kids, you're still going to track with me. All right, because here it is. I want you to imagine. Look at the most pristine and beautiful day that your sanctified imagination can take you on. I want you to look in your mind's eye, and I want you to imagine that you're there with your family, and you've taken them to this beautiful place to actually enjoy a good picnic together. You know, you prepared the nice picnic basket, and you have all of the good vegetarian you know, menu in there. Uh, with the, including the soy milk. A and so you have everything inside that basket. And it's a beautiful spring day. It, it's, the temperature is just ideal. It's 71 degrees. It's nice. It's warm. The sky is blue. The grass is green. And you take out the blanket and you just lay it out there on the ground. And it's just this beautiful picnic blanket. And your children are there. And there are, you know, off in the distance, in the trees, you see the, the, the beautiful red cardinals, you know, the blue jays, they're just swiffing in and out, and, and they're singing, they're chirping, but you can't hear the chirping, you can't hear the singing, because a hundred yards in the distance, there is an eight-lane highway, four lanes in each direction, and they're making so much noise that you can't hear the birds. And, and, and believe it or not, I don't know who constructed this, but there's no, no guardrails there. there. You know, there's no Jersey barriers, you know, separating that picnic area from the highway or the freeway. It's heavy traffic, and they're, <clears throat> they're all doing about 70, 80, maybe 90, because this is Texas. We do things fast, you know. And, and while, while, while you're there... 
I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would you have chosen to have your picnic in this place? I have no idea, but I respect your power of choice, and that's where we're going to have it, right here in this place. So you get out your picnic, you know, you get out your food, you start putting the, the, the sandwiches on a plate, you open up a bag of chips, and you're just enjoying yourself. And, and it's, <clears throat> you know, you start now picking up the sandwich and you're taking a bite out of it, you're helping little Johnny, you know, you set him off on the corner there and you're giving him his sandwich and little Johnny is, is there and he's eating his chips. So you go down back into the basket, you turn your back to little Johnny to get something out, a can of a pop out of, no, this has got to be a veggie one, yeah, yeah. It, it, this is a, a cup of, uh, of nice soy milk out of the basket and when you turn around, guess what? Little Johnny is not where you left him. Yeah. And you look up and you're searching for little Johnny. And, and, and just, just moments earlier, you had this candid conversation with little Johnny just before eating. And you told him, hey, little Johnny, you're going to stay right here. Do not wander off because there's a freeway out there. We don't want you doing that. Little Johnny, you need to stay here. And then the sense of horror brings all of this back into your memory. And it comes over you. You start thinking to yourself, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And sure enough, you look towards the freeway, and Johnny is not. Yeah, he is. You look up and towards the freeway, and Johnny is sure enough, Johnny is sprinting, not walking. He is sprinting for all he's worth, running towards the highway, and where there's no guardrails, by the way. And he is running and running. And let me tell you. Because you are a parent who loves their children, you throw your sandwich down in that blanket, you jump to your feet, and you cup your hands, and you, this is what you say. This is why I need the lapel. Johnny, Johnny, little Johnny, you stop right there, Johnny. Oh, no, no, Johnny, don't go any further. Remember what we said. Don't go by the foot. Johnny, no. Oh, Johnny. Oh, well. Beer? Do, do you have any more chips to go with this sandwich? This is just not going to cut it. Is that what parents who love their children do, yes or no? No. Instead, what will we do? Johnny! Johnny! Stop right there, Johnny! We jump to our feet. We throw that sandwich down on that, on that blanket, and we start sprinting for all it's worth to, uh, you know, towards Johnny. And we're raising our hands at the top of our voice. Stop, Johnny. Stop, stop. And then you start sprinting, and you're sprinting, and you're running, trying to catch up to little Johnny. And imagine, imagine in your mind's eye as you're sprinting, you're watching all of this. Remember, you're the fly on the proverbial wall, and, and you see from a distance about a quarter of a mile away, you see Mr. and Mrs. Rogers, who is just gradually meandering, pushing their newborn baby in their cart. And they're looking, and Mr. Rogers says, oh, you know, because he can't see. He sees you from a distance. He hears you yelling something, you know, waving your hands or with your fists. And he says, honey, to Mrs. Rogers, honey, look at those parents. Man, those parents are so abusive. I bet you when they get to that kid, they're going to give him a beating. You know, honey, I'm glad we're not going to be like those parents, right? <laughs> and Mrs. Rogers said, yeah, yeah, we're not going to be like those parents. You know, those abusive parents like that. Just look at them. Yeah. You know, I tell you, and of course, that is exactly the opposite. It is because of love. What word did I just say? It is because of love that the parent does what he or she does. You see, at the end of time, God loves his people too much, loves his people too much to simply let them slide away into destruction. That's not what he wants. He doesn't want us to simply gradually move away from the, the, the area that he has set aside for us to enjoy and to be in his presence, to gradually walk over and somehow walk into oblivion. He's willing to do everything 
he possibly can to save the likes of you and me. Even, yes, praise God, even if it means, even if it means for you and me to step off the ledge and jump. Because remember, God, he loves us, but he's going to respect your choice. He's going to respect your decision. He's going to do everything he possibly can to try to convince you otherwise. He wants you. He loves you. And he is doing everything he possibly can in the grand scheme of, the con- of this constant conflict battle that we find ourselves in, in this conflict of the ages, this great controversy that we find ourselves in, to do everything he can to save us. He's willing to do anything, even if it means raising his voice, running at the top of his voice, and running and moving and flaring his arms and getting getting someone to misconstrue his intentions, he's going to do that because his intention is to save you for salvation. He wants you in the kingdom, and that's his plan for each and every one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be candid with you. Never apologize. Never apologize for the tone of the three angels' messages, especially the third angel. Don't apologize for the tone of the third angel. It may be the only one that brings your friends, your friends, my friends. It may be the only message that brings your your coworkers, your acquaintances. It may be that message that brings them back from the edge of oblivion. Don't apologize. Don't be, you know, don't be bashful or shyful because the angel of the Lord encamps around you and he's going to work in and through you. You know, there's much more that can be said, but I'm going to start winding this down. I want you to focus on the fact that When you look at this third angel, by the time we look at this prohibition, burning, roasting, frying, I want to quickly summarize those three angels. Take a look at them to see if they all harmonize with what we've been learning so far. The first angel says to honor and to worship the whom, everyone? The creator. Why? Because justice is coming. God is going to rectify all of this. But unfortunately, time is running out. Time is running out. And I want to make an imperative appeal to your hearts to choose Jesus and embrace the first angel. The second angel says, trying to do the right thing for the wrong reason doesn't earn you salvation. You don't get a good seat to the good place. Setting aside God's law will not work. You cannot do it. The world puts the law aside, and they said it's not necessary. In fact, what does the law of God really do for you? Do you know? Do you know really what the law of God really does? If you tend to set it aside, obviously you do know, right, that you cannot earn salvation. You can't earn it by keeping the law. You, you know that. Okay, so I'm not even going to go there. And you know that the Holy Spirit convicts you of the law. So as good as that conviction through the ministry of the Holy Spirit is, You know, it's nothing compared to what I'm about to say. Because God's law is really about getting to know who God is. It's all about his character. It's all about the person who we worship. It's all about the one who is in awe and who is the creator that we worship. That's the reason why. It's about who he is. And the best summary for the third angel that I know is simply this. The third angel is, I can choose my own destruction. I can. I can choose my own destruction. But God in his love will do all he possibly can to do what, everyone? He wants to change your mind. Amen. He wants to change your mind. And right now, right now, we need to go back to to, uh, to Jimmy. Are you ready to go back to Jimmy? You guys ready? All right, let's go back to Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Oh, Jimbo. Yeah, yeah. I know you're, I, I know you're kind of upset with me, Jimmy. Uh, but like I said, this is, there's only, this is the last angel. There's only three. After this, I won't come back anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be brief. And because Jimmy's a nice guy. 
and he opens the door. You know, Jimmy, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm really sorry about the last time when I was here and I was talking to you about the third angel and, and, and the, you know, the message that God really wants you to hear. So I, I actually did some studying what God was actually trying to say after I heard this message at church. That I think this is what God was trying to say. And before I can say, Jimmy kind of bends over uh, to a table there, and he leans over, and he picks up the Bible we gave him about a couple of weeks back, a few weeks ago. You guys remember when, I, when we actually went to his house and we asked him, did you have a Bible? He said, no, no. So we gave him a Bible. So he picks up the Bible and he says, you know, Frank, um, after you left, uh, you know, I was just, I was just shaken up. So I, I, I took this Bible that you gave me a few weeks ago and I opened it up. Uh, and in just that moment, I, I just was so confused, Frank, uh, about these three angels message stuff. And so when you left me this Bible, I figured, man, I need to find out about this stuff for myself. And so I began to read. I began to read. I be actually, I began to study and study and study for hours, for hours and hours and hours. And in fact, in the Bible, there was this concordance in the back. And I went to the back and I started looking up stuff about spiritual adultery, the mark of the beast. And I got to tell you, in fact, I need to tell you, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, Frank. I, I really do. I think you're barking up the wrong tree because God is not trying to be mean to me. God is trying to get my attention. And, and you know what, Frank? I, I think you need to read this Bible. I think you need to read this Bible, Frank, because it's actually pretty good. Jimmy is right. It actually is a pretty good book. It really is. Which is why I want to remind you and remind myself this morning that it's very, very important that you remember that there are, there's all kinds of Jimmys out there. There's John's, Sally, Bob, Tim, Jody, Rudy. Who, who is your Jimmy that you have in your life? I want you to visualize that person. Who is that person? Who is that neighbor? Because there are millions of Jimmies by the thousands, by the millions there, there are, who are sincerely looking for truth. They're sincerely looking for truth. And some, you know, are, are actually looking for something better than they're currently living right now. They want something better. They're looking for something better. And they're actually, God has now placed you in their life. What better way to do that than you? You may be related to that person. You may have a sister. You may have a brother, a cousin, a niece, a nephew. Within your nucleus, your family, that God is trying to get you to share these beautiful messages with. And let me tell you, when we present it equally, all three messages, the, the blessing and the grace and the blessing of the law to help us through the power of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, by his grace and power, the people will always come to that knowledge. They will discover what they have always been dreaming about. There are millions of people, our neighbors. There's a million of Jimmies out there. And you will be blessed if we share with them the message of Jesus and of the three angels. May God, in his infinite love and mercy, may God find us and prove faithful to him and be able to be faithful to this unique message that God is charging us with. May that be a